Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So we posted on Instagram the other day that we were going to be pressure canning some chicken. And this allows your meat to stay on the shelf for a couple of years without going bad. This is a great thing to have in your short-term food storage so that in case of an emergency where maybe you don't have power and you can't freeze your meat, you will have plenty of meat stored on your shelf that is safe to eat. So with that being said, I am going to show you guys step-by-step step how we can our chicken and all of the steps necessary to doing it safely and to doing it correctly. I first wanna show you guys just the things that you're going to need to get started. So obviously you're going to need a pressure canner in order to do this. I will have some of these linked below in the description box, but to get started right here, we are first boiling some water. We have a pot going here. We're gonna wait until this boils. And then we also have water heating up back here. I actually need to turn that down because it doesn't need to be that hot. So I'll show you what we're gonna use all of these different things for. We're using quart size jars today just because we will soon be a family of six. So when it comes to eating a meal, this is about the size of a jar we will need. Just for reference, quart size jars will have about two pounds of chicken in them, where the pint size will be about one pound of chicken. It's also equivalent to one cup. So two pounds or two cups of chicken, and then the pints are one cup or one pound of chicken. These are also the things you are going to need in order to can. So I bought this kit just because it makes everything easier. It has everything that you're going to need. And I keep this just back in here and I store it in my food storage room. But you'll need a funnel to put all of your meat inside. When it comes to taking out the hot jars, you will need this little grabber here to safely remove the jars from the canner. And this is a multi-purpose tool. I'll show you all the things you will be using with this. but especially the magnet because once we cook these lids, you're going to want to sterilize them. It's just easier to grab them and then to stick them on the jars. This is the chicken we're working with today. I spent last night dicing up all of the chicken that we're going to be needing and I actually had my husband go grab a little bit more because I want to have at least 12 jars worth of chicken. I don't like doing this unless I'm doing a lot of it at once just because this whole process is quite time consuming so if you're going to do it, do a lot of it. The first thing I'm doing here is just washing all of the jars. While I'm doing this, I have the lids in that small saucepan and I have that saucepan on like a medium heat so that the rubber will soften and then that way they will stick to the jar really well and it'll just give it a really nice seal. Now that the jars are all washed and dried, I am now putting the chicken inside of the jars. What you wanna do is fill it up to the bottom of the brim. Leave at least an inch headspace so that you can fill it with water and I'll show you some more of that technique here in just a second. But each jar should have it filled all the way to the bottom of the brim. Now using some of that water that I had boiling in that pot, I'm going to be pouring just a little bit in each of the jars and then I'm going to go in and push all of the chicken down and the water down to make sure that there are no air bubbles. Once I've done that, I'm going to fill them up again with water, leaving exactly one inch headspace in all of the jars. For this next step, I'm just taking some vinegar and I'm wiping it around all the jars to again make sure that when I put the lids on that they have a really nice secure seal. Thank you. 
When it comes to screwing the lids on, what you're going to want to do is twist it on as tightly as you can and then give it one more twist to make sure that it doesn't loosen at all while it's inside of the canner. All right, now we're getting ready to put the chicken in here. First thing, make sure that you have this on the bottom of your canner, just so that you don't have the glass up against the metal because then you could crack your glass. So have this on the bottom and then we're gonna pour our water in. I'm coming back over here to my hot water and my canner takes three quarts of the hot water pour in the base. So we're gonna put three quarts from this hot water over here. Now I have the water in here. I will just be placing my cans in here. I can fit seven quarts. However, I am going to just do six just because I'm going to be doing a dozen of these. I thought I'll just do six at a time. If I was doing pints, I would be able to stack them on top of each other and I could handle all of it at once. But this just makes more sense for my family. So we are doing six quarts at one time. If you have a different canner, you won't have to do this step, but I have the metal to metal canner. So it's been suggested to get a little bit of oil and just rub it on the side of your canner just to help grease it up so it doesn't get stuck. Another version of the canner is actually you have a rubber gasket. When I was looking into buying one for myself, the video that I watched was a lady that has used multiple of these and she suggests the metal to metal versus the rubber gasket just because the rubber gasket breaks a lot and you have to replace them. Now we're just putting the lid back on and we will be bolting this shut. Sure they're all tight. Okay. The next step is turning this on. So I am going to turn this on high and we are just going to wait for steam to come out of this valve right here. This will take some time and then I'll show you the next step. It's kind of hard to see, but I can see it from this angle that I'm at. There is an even flow of steam coming out. Once that happens, you need to set your timer for 10 minutes while you're allowing this to go out before you put your pressure gauge on. As you can see here, this took 24 minutes just to get to this point. I started this at actually 7.01, so 23 minutes for it to start steaming consistently. We're gonna wait 10 more minutes and then we will put the pressure gauge on. All right, now that my timer went off, we are going to be putting on our weight, and I am going to be doing 15 pounds. This is based off your elevation, so this is really important for you to know. If you need to do 10 or 15 pounds, it'll depend on your elevation. There we go, we got the 15 pound weight on, and then once we see 15 pounds of pressure up here, we are going to turn our timer on for 90 minutes. We are going to want to watch this very closely and make sure that it stays at 15 pounds of pressure and it doesn't go below. You don't want it going back and forth. You want it to be really consistent. So you may have to turn your heat down, do whatever you can to keep this at 15 pounds of pressure for the whole 90 minutes. All right, we're at 15 pounds of pressure now. You're going to see the little valve over here kind of dance around. As long as it's only doing a little bit, this is totally normal, but you don't want it to be doing tons of spins because then it's, the pressure's too high. So just keep an eye on this, keep an eye on your 15 pounds of pressure and adjust the temperature accordingly. Make sure that you double check wherever you're located, how much time you need to cook your chicken or whatever kind of meat you wanna can, how much pressure you need to set it at. And this will also be different depending on if you're doing quarts or pints.
The entire time that the chicken was on the stove, I made sure that my eyes were facing towards the stove. You don't wanna leave the room and just assume that everything is okay. Make sure that you are staying in the kitchen and you are doing some kind of work where you're facing the stove so you can really keep a close eye on how much pounds of pressure you are at and making sure that that is staying consistent the entire time. All right, my timer just shut off. This has been at 15 pounds of pressure the whole time. I've kept my eye really close on it. So now what we're going to be doing is turn the heat all the way off. And we need to wait about 30 to 40 minutes is how long it'll take for the pressure to go all the way to zero. Once it goes all the way to zero, then I will remove this weight and we will wait again another 10 minutes before we take the lid off. Now that it's at zero, I can take off the weight. And you will hear a little bit of steam coming out. Let this sit for another 10 minutes. So I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes before I take off the lid. Now the next thing we are going to do is using this grabber, we are going to grab the chicken because it is very, 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 very hot. And we'll just be setting it here on the counter. We're gonna let these cool overnight, and tomorrow I will wipe these down, and I will take off the lids, and we'll make sure that they have a good seal. But you don't wanna be touching these for at least 12 to 24 hours because of how stinking hot they are. All right, these have been sitting overnight, and so the jars are really cool now. So the first thing I'm going to do to test the seal, you can push down on them and make sure you know that the seal is good, but you're also going to wanna to untwist them and then grab them from the seal, see if it has a good seal. This is just a good way to test it to make sure that it is safe on your shelf. The next thing I'm going to do is wash these just with some warm soap and water because there is a film left here on the jars. And then I'm going to date them so that I know when to rotate them in my food storage. Using a wet soapy rag, I'm just wiping each of the jars down to get any of the residue that came off during the pressure canning. And the next thing I'm going to do is date them just so that I am rotating them as I'm using them. And then as I'm cooking more chicken, I will just be rotating those to make sure that the oldest ones are being used first. As far as instructions go and items that I'm talking about in this video, make sure that you check the description box because I will have all of this typed up in the description. So if you wanna come back to this video for reference, I have it all typed up for you to make it just a little bit easier. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you haven't already hit that red subscribe button, make sure that you do that. And we will see you guys in the next video.